Welcome to the F Word. Tonight is the last of our heats, and this time we're opening our doors to the rest of the world. As the year comes to an end, so does my search for the F Word's best local restaurant. Each week, I've been picking two of your favourite restaurants to compete in the F Word kitchen. Make sure every dish you send out is absolutely perfect, because that will make the difference between winning and losing. I've held nail-biting heat for eight international cuisines, and I've found five of my semi-finalists already. Argentinian Steakhouse Santa Maria del Sur, Indian restaurant La San, Chinese Sweet Mandarin, Simply Thai from Teddington, and British restaurant The Pheasant. 23 out of 25! Oh. They're all through, but who will I choose to join them in the semi-finals? So far, we've concentrated on your most popular international cuisines. But Britain also boasts restaurants serving delicious food from many other countries. So tonight, we feature the very best of these in my rest of the world category. As Moroccan restaurant Dukan take on Greek restaurant Retsina. So I want all these desserts to be absolutely perfect, perfect. yes? Both of them are hoping to secure a place in next week's semi-finals. Plus, I make my own version of a classic Greek ingredient, halloumi cheese. That's not a very big teat, is it? How are you? I'm nervous, that's the really... Nervous and word. excited to be here? Absolutely, yeah. What's the secret of success behind Dukan? What is it? Simple dishes from uh, my mum's cooking. Mm -hmm. Zita, what's the secret behind your cooking? What is it? The good quality of cooking. Yes. And keep your customers happy. That's what tonight's all about. If you want to make it back to the semi-finals, OK, you need to do bloody well tonight, OK? Because only the top six high scores go through to the semi-finals. This needs to be the best service of your lives. Tonight, Greek restaurant Red Cena and Moroccan restaurant Dukan will battle for a place in next week's semi-final. Here's why I chose them. The ninth and final category in my search for the F-Word's best local restaurant is the rest of the world. From Japanese to Lebanese, from Polish to Portuguese, here in Britain, we've got it all. My team and I have been all over Britain checking out your favourite restaurants. If I had this for lunch every day, my backside would be the size of a bus. After months of searching through an extraordinary array of international cuisines, we whittled down your nominations to two truly outstanding restaurants. Both serve food from the Mediterranean, and I couldn't wait to put them to the test. The first is Dukan in Wandsworth, South London. Dukan serves classic Moroccan food, and the man behind it is hospitality manager turned owner Abdeslam Khalil. Been asked time and time again whether I could recommend a good Moroccan restaurant in, in London. I generally couldn't, and I opened my own. Dukan opened a year ago, and it's a hit with the locals. Everything I've ever chosen on the menu has been just delicious. Khalil left Casablanca 20 years ago to study hotel management in London, but as his yearning to cook grew, he started to teach himself in his spare time. I am not a trained chef. I am self-taught. When I make dishes, I don't look at a book. I just think of the core ingredients and I keep on tweaking them until it reaches all those senses that are important for you to taste. Service. F-word viewers had nothing but praise for Khalil's food, so I decided to pay Dukan a visit. Hello, sir. So come this way? Please come through. Excellent. Good to see you. <laughs> Tell me the success behind the restaurant. Why, well, to be honest with you, it's just passion for Moroccan cuisine. I just cooked because my mother cooked beautifully. Right. I grew up in a, in a household where having lunch was like the most important thing that happens. I'm glad that you're so passionate the fact that it has to be authentic. Passionate guy, very passionate. And what a quaint little place, look. From the outside, it looks like a little cafe bar. Walk inside and there's a little mini oasis. Nice. To kick off my Moroccan feast, Khalil brings me a lamb's liver tureen. It's the way my mum used to make lamb's liver. Oh, lovely. And so the liver's been sautéed? That's right, they've been actually cooked twice, mm -hmm. very gently. Thank you very much indeed. Yeah, the chopped lamb livers. Delicious, I mean, authentic. Started with cumin, and he cooked them twice. Very, very quickly, chopped them, and then quickly again. So, for a guy that's self-trained, uh, he definitely knows how to cook. Next up, it's chicken breast stuffed with figs and almonds with spiced couscous. 
In terms of the couscous, do you steam that or is it? Yeah, it's steamed. <laughs> a lot of people ask me, you know, how do you get your couscous right? And it's really the simplest thing you can do. You just, you don't leave it alone. No. You need to give it a little bit of no. love and attention. Mm. My God, that's lovely. Really good. Chicken stuffed with figs with an apricot sauce. Sounds very, very sweet. But he's managed to get the balance absolutely spot on. If we win the competition, it'll mean so much to me. It's like the underdog winning the race. Great lunch, yeah, Did really enjoyed like? it. Um, it's been a tough decision. I can only put two rations through to cook in the F word kitchen. Mm -hmm. And Dukan is one of them. Congratulations. Oh, thank you very, very oh, much. Absolutely brilliant. Thank really you. good. Thank you. And thank I'm you. very, very happy. Absolutely delicious. Thank you kept that authenticity. And that's really important for a local eatery. Thank you oh. very much. You actually filled my heart with joy. We went through. Hey. Thanks a lot. Cheers. We're going through, yeah. Hi. Hold on. Rochetta's not even freshly trained. He's certainly been listening to his mother, that's for sure. I think my mother would be proud. The other restaurant I've chosen from your nominations in the rest of the world category is in Belsize Park, North London. Retsina is a traditional family-run Greek restaurant. Since his father retired 13 years ago, son Minos has been managing the business. It's seen as our family business. It's been going on for around 25 years. So it's our life in one way or another. Minos's mother, Zita, has been cooking for over 50 years, but still refuses to hang up her apron. I like to be in the kitchen. I joined to be in the kitchen and make me really pleased. What makes my mum a great chef? She's a perfectionist. You know, she was brought up with Greek food and she knows what Greek food is all about. Zita's delicious Greek recipes keep Red Zina's customers coming back for more. The food is absolutely fantastic, you know, uh, you can just feel like the quality of it is brilliant. I've been to quite a few Greek restaurants before, but this one's definitely the best restaurant, without a doubt. F word viewers gave Red Zina's such glowing testimonials, I decided to go there for lunch myself. Hello. Hi there. How are you? Minos, nice to meet you. Minos, Minos. good to see you. It smells amazing. And where's the chef? How nice are you? Nice to meet you. I'm very well, thank yeah. you. Well, nice to see you. Ah, You're very you look welcome. Beautiful. Now, what's for lunch today? What have you got as a special? I've got nice leftico in the oven. We have the souvla, kebabs, right. sarka, roast potatoes. OK, brilliant. Well, I'll leave it to you. Leave it yes? to me. After Zita's lovely warm welcome, I already felt at home. But would the food live up to its reputation? First up, classic Greek meze. Calamari, octopus and a selection of dips. Nice. And how are the octopus cooked? Um, it's grilled. Grilled. Really does smell amazing. Mm. You can really balls up cooking octopus, but that is done beautifully. So far, Cedar's cooking was seriously good. I couldn't wait to get it stuck into my main course. Shoulder of lamb, beef stethardo, roast potatoes and lamb, and chicken spit roast. The dishes kept on coming. Delicious. I mean, really good. That shoulder of lamb, I mean, that's the cut that a lot of chefs don't understand how to cook. She does. There should be a lot more chefs in London coming to spend a day with this lady here to see how to braise, yeah, a shoulder of lamb. It will be very honour for us. We're going to be over the moon to win it. The problem I'm faced with is the variety of restaurants. So the unfortunate news is, and I'm really sorry to say this because I know you don't like yeah. taking any time out, but you're through. Congratulations. <laughs> uh, congratulations. <laughs> and it tasted fantastic. Uh, Really, congratulations. <laughs> huh? Authentic Thank and you. delicious. <laughs> Thank so now you have to take another day off, OK? <laughs> if you couldn't spot the chef, you'd want to meet the person because you can't quite believe that that level of authenticity is there. So it's just the most amazing Greek food. I'm very pleased. And I will try my best to keep the, those 50 customers happy. So from your nominations, I've chosen two extraordinary restaurants. Will the F-word diners prefer the traditional Moroccan dishes Khalil creates for his beloved restaurant Dukan? Or Mama Zita's home cooking at the Greek restaurant Retsina? Next on the menu, it's a Mediterranean battle tonight as the fight for the last place in the semi-final begins. I feel, I feel a fight coming here from Zita. And I go Greek trying to make halloumi cheese, but with an unusual ingredient. I mean, it's so creamy.
back in London at the F Word restaurants. We're going global in our rest of the world category to celebrate local restaurants serving us delicious food from all four corners of the earth. And thanks to your nominations and months of searching, we found two exceptional restaurants. Greet Retsina in North London and Moroccan Dukan in South London. Sardines are very popular in both Morocco and Greece, so I've challenged the brigades to cook their starters with this delicious Mediterranean fish. Guys, it's not a race, OK? Tonight is about that level of excitement, consistency, and make sure you're happy with everything you send. At Dukan in South London, Khalil's love for food stems from his Moroccan childhood. I've always kind of embraced food. I was surrounded with food due to uh, the mother that is very, very passionate about cuisine. Before he started tonight, Khalil is making sardine fritters. He mixes sliced sardines with shallots, cumin, lemon thyme, rolls them into balls and fries them until golden. He serves with bulgur wheat and tomato and a green pepper dressing. So, uh, Khalil, you've gone for a modern interpretation with this round sardine dish. Mm -hmm. The idea was actually to make a meatball without actually being a really a mince uh, sardine, because right. they go all dark and horrible when you do that. The idea came from where? It's, it's, it's the way we've always done them. I mean, my mum always fried them. She didn't fry them in bowls necessarily. She did them sort of uh, uh -huh. butterflied with some flour okay. and some yep. moolah. She was a big influence on your cooking. Oh, your very much so. I mean, the only influence, really. Now, Zita, on New Year's Eve, are you going to put your feet up and say, no more cooking? I'm, I'm not gonna... quickie. Once a year, I'm not quickie. New Year's Day. As your night off? Yes. So that's the only day across Which the year? I'm not quickie, yes. Oh I'm not quickie. And you, I'm wait to the end the... and you wait to the end of the year to do that? <laughs> yes. Tucked away in the suburbs of North London is Retsina, a restaurant that serves classic Greek food in a warm, friendly atmosphere. I've been coming here for 20 years. It's got to say something for the restaurant and the people. Retsina's food is all about simplicity. So tonight, they're cooking grilled sardines with Greek tomato sauce. They glaze their sardines in olive oil and sprinkle with oregano. Then grill them on both sides and serve with salad and a Greek tomato sauce made with chopped tomatoes, garlic, coriander, cumin and paprika. You're cooking the sardines on the grill? Yes. On yes, the bone? And the bone. So you're convinced that your sardine, yes, grilled plainly on the bone is going to be far tastier than yes. Dukan's, yes? Yes. Why? You have to have the bone to give more taste. OK, interesting. And why do you think yours without the bone well, is going to taste better in than fact, Zita's? I think Zita's wrong, because I've got a few bits of bones in there just to keep the flavour. Oh, so you've, kept, <laughs> you've missed your bones? I've kept, I made sure the little bones on the salad are there. Eating you know, sardines, more. you can accept a few bones here everywhere, well, yes? Well, exactly. But not the main anyway. one in the Unless video. you're the Queen Mother. I, I, feel, I feel a fight coming here from Zita. Zita from Ritzina takes her food very seriously, but for some Greeks, it's almost a religion. Traditional home-cooked food is sacred to Greeks. And there's a group of keen Greek cooks who are about to put my skills to the test. I've been given the ultimate challenge to create an amazing dish for a fantastic Greek cookbook. Whether or not my recipe makes the grade will be down to this group, the congregation from a Greek Orthodox church in North London. They're so passionate about Greek food that they're putting together their own cookbook. For the Greeks in Cyprus, food is, a, is very important. It is the most important thing in their lives. So we decided just to make a book and then sell it just to raise some money for the church as well. Nikki Rosu Andreou has collected dozens of traditional Greek recipes to ensure they're preserved for future generations of London Greeks. And only the best will go in her book. If Gordon recipes is is good enough, he's going to just put it in the book. Otherwise, it's not. I love a challenge, but in order to succeed, I need to create a fantastic dish using a classic Greek ingredient. I've chosen one that's doubled in popularity in Britain over the past 10 years, halloumi cheese, and I'll be making it from scratch. Now, I'm taking a bit of a risk here, because we're also used to eating halloumi cheese made out of cow's milk. I'm going to push the boat out and make mine with 100% sheep's milk. Today's cow's milk is used in mass-produced halloumi because it's cheaper. But traditionally, Greek Cypriots use sheep or goat's milk because it provides a richer flavour. I want the very best, so I'll be doing the same with the help of dairy farmer Kylie Threadgold. So why is it that we're not actually sort of eating and drinking more sheep's milk? A lot of people don't actually associate sheep with milk. No. Know, if you think of uh, famous French cheeses, we've got Roquefort. It's an unpasteurised sheep's milk cheese. Yeah. That's not a very big teat, is it? No, that's why I say it is a, a finger and thumb job, really, you know? Jesus. The fat content in sheep's milk will make my halloumi creamier and softer than cheese made with cow's milk. 
I tell you what, you make it look so easy. Yeah. And there's an art to it, isn't there? I think she's just about empty there, Gordon. You sell that unpasteurised? We do sell it unpasteurised. Obviously, we produce it normally in a nice, clean milking parlour. I mean, it's so creamy. It is. I'm very... incredibly creamy. That looks fantastic, you know that? It does. Really good. Thick, rich, creamy. And about to be turned into the most amazing halloumi. That's harder than I thought it was going to be. Thank you. Well, well done. <laughs> With a churn full of the freshest sheep's milk, I leave Essex and head to West Sussex to meet one of the only halloumi cheesemakers in the UK. Mark Hardy produces halloumi using nothing but sheep's milk and I'm relying on his expertise to teach me to make the very best. This is halloumi we made uh, about three days ago. I'm dying to taste it. Nice squeakiness to it. That's lovely. Got really good flavour. As it you breaks know, down the mouth, it. it's more yeah. creamy. Beautifully seasoned all the way in, which is lovely. Yeah. Really nice indeed. Yeah. So that's the objective for mine to come out as good as this one. It is, yeah. I'm sure it will. My halloumi will be made using the most traditional Greek Cypriot methods. Never made it before, always been fascinated by its texture. Bring the milk up to... 32 degrees. An enzyme is added called rennet, and in 30 minutes it sets the milk, so it can be split into curds and whey. And the curd here, that's basically this sort of... I mean, that's the foundation of the cheese. It's where the cheese will come from. As the curds and whey are warmed, the consistency constantly changes. It's like scrambled egg now. It does look like scrambled egg, doesn't it? The curd is then pressed into a mould and left to cool. The halloumi is simmered in the whey for 45 minutes, and it is this process that stops it melting like other cheeses when you cook it. So now they're floating. And that's it. Yep. It's still quite soft, aren't they? When you lift it out, it should bounce back. Right. Basically, which is what it's doing. Mm -hmm. To preserve the cheese and give the halloumi its salty flavour, it's dropped into brine for 24 hours. Then it'll be dressed with mint to enhance its flavour. Now I've got to think of something really exciting to do it justice. Yeah. Yeah? I have a recipe in mind that will complement the slightly salty flavour of my handmade halloumi. But would it be good enough for Nikki's all Greek cookbook? Hi, how, how are, are you? you? I'm OK, good about you. Very well indeed, thank you. Very happy to be here. Now, that looks amazing. Oh, that's good. Thank yes? OK, thank you. Nikki has sent me the challenge of coming up with a recipe that can sit alongside these truly authentic Greek dishes. Right, I've got my work cut out big time. And all I've got is this amazing halloumi, handmade. So I'm going to do a salad and pan-fried scallops or some wonderful sautéed 100% sheep's milk halloumi. Slice the scallops and coat them in flour, egg and Japanese breadcrumbs. Get them nice and crisp on the outside and very sort of sweet in the middle. Their sweet flavour will go brilliantly with a salty halloumi. The good thing about halloumi made with 100% sheep's milk is it doesn't crumble. Now, this of halloumi to sit on top of the roasted scallops. Hot pan. The halloumi is fried alongside the scallops in olive oil. The nice thing about the halloumi, when you sauté it like that, it doesn't melt, it doesn't disintegrate. But what it does do is get a really nice flavour. A little seasoning on the scallops. To go with the halloumi and scallops, a caper and sultana vinaigrette. Simply boil both in some salted water. A little touch of olive oil in there and a teaspoon of white wine vinegar then blitz. Scallops onto the plate. The golden brown halloumi is then served on the scallops with the vinaigrette. That looks amazing. I hope I've done justice to my halloumi, and more importantly, it passes the test for their authentic Greek cookbook. Right. Please, take a little slice. OK. You like that? It's delicious, really. Mm. Now, really? the first and foremost important, how was the halloumi first? Very good halloumi. It's yeah. like the halloumi that you are making at home, and it's very, very nice, really. And the combination with that the and the scallop? The combination is brilliant, uh -huh. really. It's very good. The most important question, is it going to go in the cookbook? Oh, yes, 100%. Yes. 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 Excellent. Yes. Excellent. Yes. Thank Bravo. You with more lemon. Thank you. Okay. Yes. We wish you all the best. Thank you very much indeed. Very nice. Last table is a two. Okay, okay a little wipe down. Chef, yeah? four, four. four. Last table, yes. A little wipe down first, so they don't get any crap underneath the plates. Good, well done. That's your last table, yes? Yes. Yes. Clear down and get ready for the main course. Well done. It was very tasty, and the sauce was very complimentary to the fish once you actually uh, managed to get it off of the bone. Nice yeah. to see you both. Are you well? Yeah, very well. That's good to see you again. Thank you. Good to see you. Likewise. Good to see you too. Good. What would it mean for you tonight to walk out here as the winner? Oh, it would be absolutely fantastic, especially for my mother. All the yeah. years that she's worked in the kitchens and yeah. one way or another, it would be fantastic for her, it really yeah. would be. Extraordinary woman that is so passionate, hasn't taken a holiday in two years. When's she going to retire? She'd... 
I've been doing that for years. The reason I bought this big restaurant overall was to calm down a bit, relax a bit. Well, you could do a deal with her. Promise her to shave properly, and then she could retire. No? Maybe. 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 Yes, I will. Go on then. Yes. You should shave it for him. Good to see you both. Thank you, mate. Take care. Bye bye. It didn't have much taste, and to be honest, when you see a sardine, you expect it to be like a sardine, nice and fresh and grilled, not messed around like that. Isabella, nice to see you, yeah, my darling. Nice to see you. Likewise. Welcome to the F-word. How are you? Like, very excited, yeah. Watching you in action, how does it make you feel? Well, it's not normally like that. He's a bit stressed today, but uh, I'm sure he's enjoying himself, yeah. yeah. Do you think he's going to win tonight? Well, I really hope so, because he's, he's so passionate and he really cooks with mm -hmm. his heart, so, yes. yeah. Nice to see you. Hope you enjoy nice my courses, David. Thank it's a pleasure. Thank, Thank you, you. Yes, Thank you. Thank you. Excellent. <laughs> right, Redzina's simply grilled sardine. Hopefully they'll just flake off the bone nicely. Yeah, beautiful. Touch of the sauce. Mm. Mm. Flavour, delicious. Seasoned beautifully, and it just falls away from the bone. Delicious, really good. Now, Dukan, it looks like a plate of meatballs on couscous. He's left the skin on, which is a bit disturbing. Does it deliver in flavour? Mm. It's quite mushy and floury inside, and it doesn't actually taste much of a sardine. It's a clear winner for me. Definitely Red Cena's char-grilled sardine. Simply done, tasting delicious, no fuss. If the diners don't like their starters, they don't pay. The results are in. Thank you. So, Dukan, let's start off with you first, yes? The number of customers that are happy to pay for their starter out of 25 is... Congratulations. 21 out of 25. Great start. What do they like, Jimmy? Um, great presentation. Great presentation, clearly. And uh, a great zesty sauce as well. 21 out of 25. Great start. Thank you. Really well done, yes? OK. Retina, the number of customers that are happy to pay for your sardine out of 25 is... ..23 out of 25. Well done. That's incredible. Thank you. That Thank you is a great start. Thank you for everybody. JB, what are they like? They thought that the, the fish had a great smoky flavour and the sauce complement very well the fish as well. Yes. Thank you to everybody. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Two very, very good starts. 21 out of 25. 23 out of 25. There's only two points in it. And there's 50 main courses each. Great start. Clear down. Yeah, let's concentrate on the main course. Well done. <laughs> now both restaurants are going to cook their main course. First up, Dukan. Dukan's signature dish tonight is king prawn and mussel tagine. I'll take a couple of peppers from there. Khalil starts by making charmoula paste with chopped coriander, sliced garlic, salt, cumin, paprika and lemon juice. He adds finely chopped preserved lemons and mixes with olive oil to make a paste. He puts the charmoula into a sizzling pan. Two generous teaspoons there. And adds king prawns and harissa. It's a beautiful smell, really, really beautiful smell. He adds chopped roasted red peppers, mussels and covers. Really, mostly what I'm trying to get there is the flavour and the colour for the dish. Then add sliced potatoes and simmers. He serves in a tagine pot and garnishes with grilled lemon and coriander. King prawn and mussel tagine served. What's so special about this tagine? It's made with charmoula, a very well-known Moroccan marinade. Yes. And how successful has this tagine with the prawns and mussels been in the restaurant? This is very successful, actually. Yeah. I mean, I've got people coming particularly just for this dish. Uh -huh. So, Cesar, where did you learn to cook? I learned from a very, very young age. I used to like to be in the kitchen with my mother. At Greek restaurant Rosina, head chef Zita's menu is inspired by recipes she learned from her mother. Rosina's signature dish tonight is a Greek mixed grill. For the chicken kebabs, Zita cubes a chicken breast. She then coats the chicken with a marinade of oregano, Greek yogurt, pepper puree, crushed garlic, lemon juice, and olive oil. I make it taste and moist, not to get dry, because always the breast of chicken, if you're not very careful, it's very dry. For the lamb kebabs, Zita marinades cubes of lamb in pepper puree, lemon juice, and oregano. Next, she chops onion and tomato for the kebabs, then grills, and baste with olive oil and lemon juice, oregano, salt and pepper. Then, she grills the lamb cutlets. 
And finally, Sita grills the calf's liver, then plates everything up with fresh tzatziki, tabbouleh, some rocket leaves, and a wedge of lemon. Brazina's Greek mixed grill served. Why do you think the diners will be excited about this? It's very juicy, very tasty, very nice. Now, your son said that if you win tonight, he's going to shave. That's, yes. That stupid beard off. Yeah, have you got a sharp knife? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> if you win tonight, it's coming off. That's the good That's news. That's it. Good news. Before he's leaving the studio, he ha we have to do it. We definitely. <laughs> and, guys, remember, yeah, every table has to go out like the first table, yeah? Yes, With that level of exact perfection, yeah? Absolutely. Yeah? Good. Now for some festive pie filling, Moroccan style. Traditional British mince pies have been around for centuries. They used to be filled with fruit, real mince meat, and spices brought back from the Middle East during the Crusades. Over time, the meat has given way to the fruit and spices. They still do something similar in Morocco, but it's called pastilla. But Moroccans use a meat seldom seen on British menus Pigeon. <music> Who better to send on a taste test than my favourite old London bird, Janet Street Porter? Most people think of pigeons as nasty vermin and wouldn't dream of eating them. It's not surprising, is it? The scruffy feral pigeons we see in our cities hardly look appetising. Yeah, I wouldn't even think about eating them. Pigeons are scoundrels. OK, so flying rats don't exactly get you going. But wood pigeon, the feral pigeon's clean living country cousin, might. In Morocco, they absolutely love it. Now, I love Moroccan food, and I think they've got exactly the right idea when it comes to making pigeons tasty. Wood pigeon is on the menu of one of the finest Moroccan restaurants in the UK, Momo, in central London. I'm here to meet executive chef Mohamed Orad. Hi, Mohammed. I'm Hi. Janet. Hi. Wood pigeon is prized for its rich red meat, but you'll probably need to order it from your local butcher. OK, so they're not scummy. They're not flying rats. They're not flying rats. That's very good. They're not flying rats. That is a free-range wood pigeon. It looks absolutely delicious. Mohammed's going to be showing me a classic Moroccan dish that you can do at home, pastillas with a pigeon filling. Tell me what it is. It's, it's a pie. It's, it's a pie, it's a pie with this very complicated phyllo pastry. Exactly. First, the filling. Mohammed fries finely diced onions in butter. How many of these do you make in a week? We make about 30 a day. 30 a day? Next, we take the breast meat off the bone and add the carcasses to the onions. Moroccan cuisine is all about spices, scents and colours, so we also add chopped coriander and sliced ginger. And five sticks of cinnamon in. Bosh, bosh, bosh. And a pinch of saffron. Now leave it to four. Two hours. At least. <laughs> OK, great. The pigeon breasts are coated in olive oil, seasoned and seared in a separate pan. We remove the carcasses and cinnamon sticks and add sugar. It smells delicious. Sugar helps to create that mouth-watering Moroccan mix of sweet and savoury flavours that reminds me of Christmas. As the filling mixture reduces, we dice the pigeon breast. Two beaten eggs are added to thicken and bind the filling mix. We add an extra sprinkle of cinnamon and the pigeon meat goes in. It's an unusual combination of smells. It's very, very unusual. The pastilla filling is now ready. Now thin stitch. Brush the edge of a sheet of phyllo pastry with egg white. Place the pigeon meat filling in the centre and top with roast almonds. Fold the pastry. So it's like a very sophisticated piece of origami. Wrap a second sheet around the pastilla and stick down with egg white. Uh, I'll have a go. Okay. I go okay. in. Yeah. Try to... No, 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 no. <laughs> no, don't worry, I'm on it, I'm on it. OK. I think what I really like about Moroccan food is combining meat with sweet things. It's just fantastic. Look at that! We glaze the pastillas with butter and stick them in a hot oven for five minutes. Oh, they look fantastic. That's my one. And that's your one. <laughs> Finally, we dust them with icing sugar and finish with cinnamon. Truly Moorish. It's delicious. It is, huh? It's the combination of sugar and meat together. Right, I'm going to take mine for Gordon. Right. It was nice having you. Thank it's you. like Gordon likes it. Thank you. Gordon. 
Merci. Hi. Annie, you look great. Thank you. Now, Moroccan restaurant in the house tonight. Yeah? Yes. You've also been cooking a spot of Moroccan cuisine. Today, yes. I learned how to cook a pastilla. It, amazing. So this now, is pigeon yeah. pastilla. And mm -hmm. This is something that I've eaten in Morocco. Yeah. It's meat, sugar and eggs together. That's delicious. In phyllo pastry. But it's delicious, isn't Really it? good indeed. Now, they're not the sort of average pigeon that fly over Nelson's column. These no. are wood pigeons. They're wood pigeons yeah. and they're very plump. When you cook pigeon, it overcooks within seconds. That is moist, delicious, slightly gamey, but sweet. What you were supposed to say, Gordon, right. if you don't mind me Please. fucking saying oh. so, was, Janet, what a beautiful <laughs> pie you made with that phyllo no. pastry, folding <laughs> it round your meat. Uh, <laughs> Look, you just mashed it up uh, beforehand. <laughs> it was. It was like origami. <laughs> really well done. Good to see you. Last sure. table. Yes, For sir. stunning yes, grill, yes? Yes. Make them perfect, oh. guys, yeah? Well done. Thank Very you, good. Chef. Thank, Thank you, Chef. Thank you. Really well done. Well done, everybody. Yeah, job well done. Thank you. The meat was all cooked to perfection. Um, I thought it went really well with the tzatziki and the tabbouleh. It was really nice, actually. Only thing that let it down was the prawns. They were slightly overdone. Um, but the presentation was fantastic. Uh, lifting off the lid was really good. Right, I've been dying to taste these. Um, it seems grill, lamb. Nicely marked, beautifully cooked, and mm, that's delicious. Again, simply done. Beautifully char grilled chicken, marinated with the pepper and the onions. Yeah, I mean, the whole thing looks simple, but the most important thing about this is getting every little component right, and they have. Dukan. Uh, awkward. Mussels in the shell, prawns with the heads on, and then potato in the bottom. So, prawn slightly rubbery. It's a great shame. And when they're bright white like that inside, it's, it's a sign of the prawn actually being so overcooked. Potato at the bottom. That's really weird, because potatoes rock hard. Overcooked prawn and a slightly undercooked potato. What a shame. I hope the diners didn't get what I got. So, it was up to me, definitely the mixed grill. The votes have been counted and the results are in. Right, results of the main course. Uh, JB, please. Uh, good luck to all four of you. Uh, right, uh, Zita. So, the number of customers that are happy to pay for your mixed grill out of 50 is... Well done, 37 out of 50. Huh? Thank really you. good. Thank you. What are they like? And they thought the, the meat was delicious. Yes. And the tzatziki was full of flavor. And the 13 that didn't pay, what do they say? Um, what the, reason? The, the liver overcooked and the veg undercooked. And the veg on the skewer undercooked. Mm -hmm. Yeah. OK. Right, Khalil. The number of customers that are happy to pay out of 50 for your tagine is? Nineteen out of fifty. What went wrong? Um, the pr prawns overcooked. The potato undercooked. That's a kick in the balls. You can pull this back. Do not give up. Good. Okay. Thanks, Chef. Yeah. Next on the menu, can Duke and snatch victory from Red Cena? So I want all these desserts to be absolutely perfect. perfect. Yes. It's D-Day for the meat that Janet's been preparing for next week's grand final. I'm sorry, because you've been good fun, but you're going to make the most fantastic meat. Welcome back. The diners are sitting in judgment on two brigades who are determined to make it through to next week's semi-finals. And if they make it all the way to the grand final, they'll be cooking with meat provided by Janet from her farm in Yorkshire. This series, I've asked Janet to provide the meat for the F Word's best local restaurant competition final. Come out, you bloody lazy birds. Get off your arses. Along the way, she picked up a few prizes of her own. <laughs> Both her Dexter cattle <laughs> and her mangalitsa pigs won rosettes at the prestigious Nidderdale show. Oh, my word. Oh, Janet, well done. Oh, well fantastic. Done. A sure sign of the quality we can expect in the F Word kitchen. Janet's Dexter Steers and Ixworth Poultry have already gone for slaughter. 
but the three porkers have clearly got under her skin and Janet's face with the hardest farewell of all. Hi, guys. I've come to say goodbye. I'm afraid it's off to the slaughterhouse for you. I'm sorry, because you've been good fun and you've got great personalities. But you're going to make the most fantastic meat, I know that. Do you want one last game of football? Should we just have one last game? I'll be in goal. Come on, pass. Pass it. Come on, pass. They will make the most brilliant meat, I know that. And they've really fattened up well. They're really happy animals. So I don't feel that bad about them going to the slaughter. Yeah. Right. Very good. Janet takes the pigs on their final journey. Well, I'm sad the pigs are going to be slaughtered because they, of all the animals, they've got the biggest personalities and they've been a real pleasure to be around. On the other hand, they're never going to be pets. They were always being bred for food and I think they've had a terrific life. Hello, Janet. Martin! Oh, terrible weather. Beautiful weather. Ugh. Slaughterman Martin McIntyre leads the pigs to a temporary pen. This brief respite allows the pigs to relax and it's called lairage. Nice pigs. I don't want the last time they see me to be wearing looking like this. The pigs will be slaughtered as humanely as possible. So before they are killed, they will be stunned. Electrical tongs pass 240 volts through the pig, knocking it out. They'll know and feel nothing. The pig's throat must be cut within 15 seconds of stunning to ensure an absolutely painless end. I mean, it's hard to watch. You sure they don't feel anything? Not a thing. The pig now dead, its carcass goes into a hot water tank to get rid of its extraordinary wiry hair. Feel that, Janet. Like a baby's bone. Feel that. Hey. An inspector from the Meat Hygiene Service monitors the slaughter process to make sure all the meat and offal is fit for human consumption. The pig is then gutted and his organs inspected. So does the meat inspector inspect all of this? Yes. They have to be certified before they can pass into the food supply chain. Next, she inspects the carcass. Yeah. That's nice. I think that's a good, good yes. It's a good pig. Good pig. <laughs> right, so we can serve that in Gordon's restaurant. Yeah, you can. <laughs> okay, well, get your stamp on yes. it then. Finally, the carcass is split and hung in the chiller, ready for shipping. Pork should hang for two to three days for its best flavour. Back at her small holding, Janet has time to reflect on a once in a lifetime farming experience. Mothering, well, it's not something I took to. I miss the pigs. Ixworth chickens, Dexter cattle, Mangalitza pigs, the two restaurants lucky enough to go through to next week's final are sure to have some fantastic meat to cook with. For the dessert, the brigades are cooking my recipe for apple cake, which is inspired by the sweet and spicy flavors of Morocco and Greece. Spiced apple cake, aromatic, sweet and really easy to make. First off, start preparing the apples. Hot pan, butter, apples, chop. Cinnamon powder. Honey. That starts to get the apples really nice and caramelised. Then add dates, orange zest and spoon into baking dishes. For the sponge topping, sift 125 grams of plain flour, Add a pinch of salt, cast of sugar, baking powder, butter, and blitz. And what you're looking for is this really nice, soft breadcrumb texture. Then add orange zest and mix in beaten egg, milk, and vanilla extract. Spoon onto the spiced apples, sprinkle with flaked almonds, and bake for around 18 minutes. Dust with icing sugar and finish with vanilla ice cream. Spiced apple cake, done. So I want all these desserts to be absolutely perfect, yes? This is my recipe and there's no excuse on this one, yeah? The secret 
in the caramelization of the apples. Yes. Add the dates, season with the cinnamon, glaze with the honey. Yes. Okay. Do you wish you were grilling the apples on the grill or are you happy to be doing this in a pan? <laughs> yeah? Let's go, guys. Ice cream's melting. Let's go. It should be melting in front of the customer. Wait. Yeah, not in front of us. Tonight, I'm going up against Cold Feet star Faye Ripley. If she loses the challenge tonight, she promises to eat this little baby here. A plate of cold feet. You! I'm gonna have to win, aren't you're I? Gonna, you're definitely gonna have to win. Uh, yes. Good. Now, what are you cooking? Brownies. We're gonna brownies. do my break your diet brownies. Uh, you're cooking brownies, yeah? So I'm gonna make my favourite recipe, chocolate brownies. Confident? I'm aware of the fact that I don't have any Michelin stars. <laughs> if I beat you, yes. it would be the greatest achievement of my life. I'm going <laughs> to include the birth of my two children. Is that wrong? I feel very honoured to hear that. Now, is that slow motion whisk in there? What is that? My sugar and my eggs. Mm -hmm. This is enough, Gordon. I don't need to show off is of my equipment. <laughs> I'm just, this is very much back to basics over here. In a minute, when that's cooled down, I'm going to just combine that, just fold that mm -hmm. in there. What are you doing? So, OK, in here, my bambri, I've got my butter and my chocolate melting nice and slowly. Yes, okay. yes. OK, and then eggs, vanilla, sugar in, and I'm going to go for some electricity. So excuse me while I have a quick whisk. Go on. Um, now, you were 30 when you got your big break on cold feet. It gripped the nation. Yes, I think and it And quite really moving did. as well, quite emotional. It had a massive effect on my career and my life, that mm -hmm. show. It had a good old combo, didn't it? Yeah. And people still sort of are very nostalgic about it, and mm -hmm. they're sweet. You know, people still talk about it to me yeah. in the streets and stuff. Now, your husband's Australian. Yeah? He is. And he's a lot younger than you. Does that make you a cougar? <gasps> he's not that much younger than me. Four years, in men's terms, is... Yeah. It's My wife thinks he's quite hot. He is quite hot. Yes. yes. Your husband did a, uh, an amazing naked scene in Muriel's wedding. Yes. <gasps> My husband gets to often be naked <laughs> on screen. Do you know he had his lips around Emmanuel Bayard's nipple once? He what? It's just what you do. No, it's what you go to work. You suck someone's nipple. It's what you have to do. He gets to have sex on screen with loads of really beautiful women. I get John Thompson. Jesus Christ. <laughs> would you ever do a naked scene? I don't think anyone would want to see it, to be <laughs> honest. <laughs> No one's going to pay money. Perhaps in a light comedy, they might. <laughs> now, you're copying me, cos everything I do, OK, from adding my cooker powder... You're copying me? What do you mean, <laughs> I'm copying you? Stop copying my recipe. Stop copying my it's recipe. It's embarrassing. Now, melt the chocolate with the butter over a bain-marie and then fold it in the cocoa powder and the flour and then broke through these really nice little lumps of milk chocolate, dark chocolate and white chocolate throughout the mix. Quite dense, so it's going to melt and cook at the same time. Three yes. of paper at the bottom, yeah? To stop it from sticking. Come on. And then straight in, yeah? Time to find out what the blind tasters make of the brownies. Let's plate up. Look at that baby. Mmm! <clears throat> Whatever. OK. Let's go, side by side. <gasps> Yours Look at that. looks really good. Right. Where is he? My little French fighter pilot. Kid. Off you go. Stick with me, kid. Don't forget, <laughs> I pay your salary. Let's go. <laughs> but I might do one day. <laughs> Hello. 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 It's very crumbly, it's isn't it? Very, very, very light. Mm. Very dry, but quite nice. It's quite dry. It's too sticky. It's not sweet. Sweet and bitter, which is nice. OK. And it's, it's not as dry on the outside. It's caramelised almost. This one's actually a little bit sweeter as well, yeah. which I quite like. Mm. The texture holds up better. Mm. It's a bit on the outside yeah. and then soft in the middle. Mm. Right, quite the confident. No! You are. Right, JP. Results. Oh, no, he's got that smirk on his face. <laughs> I don't like it. Right. How did they go down? <laughs> you win very well. What was the score first? Um, four to one. Four to one? <gasps> yeah. Four one to who? One to you. Well done. Oh, oh no! Oh, come on! <laughs> I'm going to punch the air. Oh, We're come on! Yeah. You're joking, yeah. aren't you? <laughs> four one? Yeah. So, the Michelin stars... Are, why didn't they like mine? Um, it uh, wasn't cooked enough. Wasn't cooked enough. Yeah, it was undercooked. Mine right? was perfect, soft and gooey in the centre, crisp on the outside. Yeah, too gooey, yeah. actually. Too gooey. Yeah. Four one. I can't four believe one, you beat four me. Four one. Four one. I'll send you yeah. the recipe. Bye, Thank babes. You. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> With a place in the semi-finals at stake, everything rests on this last course. Come on, you can pull this back. Yes. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, now yes, it's sir. about. Uh, Reputation, restaurant, what you stand yeah. for, what you believe in, Classic. yeah, and why you decided to open that restaurant. Yeah? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Don't let one dish, yeah, put you off. Yes, it's a kick in the bollocks, clearly. However, <laughs> you can pull it back. Yeah. Thank you, chef. Yeah. And Sita. Yeah. Yes, it's not uh, over. Chef. So the fat lady sings. No. 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 We have Nowhere to be, near. It. The I'm hard not saying. Work is not, now. The absolutely. Hard work definitely. Now, yes. It's not over. No. Yet. No. It's not over yet. 
For Dukan, victory could be the beginning of something really special for Khalil. Well, winning the, the competition would definitely change my life. And if Rosina win tonight, it will be an outstanding achievement for 63-year-old Zita. To win the competition for us, it will be honour and uh, we're going to be over the moon to win it. What did the diners make of the brigade's dessert? It was beautiful. Lots of cinnamon, perfect. Massive, enough to fill me for two. I thought it was a good seasonal dessert, nicely spiced, lots of cinnamon, really good, nicely flavoured dessert. Right, dessert. But seen as the secret behind this dessert is the cooking of the apples to begin with. Mmm. That's delicious. Not overcooked, not undercooked, and just really nice and moist. It doesn't stick to the roof of your mouth. Beautifully done. Dukan. Mm. Nice. Lovely colour on the apples. Mm. Nice and fragrant with the orange running through, and a really nice, generous caramelisation on the apples with the honey. Delicious. Between the two of them, it's a tough call because uh, they both taste delicious. It is my recipe. However, I think the slight edge goes to Dukan because they've got that real nice flavour in the apples. With the last semi-final place up for grabs, the fate of the brigades is in the hands of the diners. Right, JB, okay. results, please. Dukan, going to start with you. Now, the number of customers that are happy to pay for your desserts out of 25 is... That is amazing. 23 out of 25. Well done. Really well done. Great job. That is fantastic. Well done. That is a very high score. Pretty good. Well done. Right, Redzina. That means you need four or more out of 25 for your dessert to win tonight. But that's not the only target because yes, only sir. the top six, six yes. the top highest scoring restaurants on the leaderboard go through to the semi-final. Yes. So to get in to the top six, you need to get 15 out of 25 or more. That's how tight it is. Very tight. OK, the number of customers that are happy to pay for dessert out of 25 Bearing in mind what's at stake is seventeen out of twenty-five. Well done! Yes! That is amazing! That is amazing! Congratulations, brilliant! Oh, Absolutely brilliant. <laughs> Every point you earned. Well done. What an amazing night. Yeah, really, seriously, well done. I'm going to put it right in the front of the restaurant so everybody is coming and they will see how proud I am. So Rosina clinched the final spot in the semi finals. They'll be joining my best Indian, Chinese, Thai, Argentinian, and British restaurants. Welcome to the final week of my competition to find the F-Word's best local restaurant. We started with nearly 10,000 nominations, and from these, 18 outstanding restaurants made it through to compete in the F-Word kitchen. Now only six remain in the competition. In tonight's semi-final, three great restaurants go head-to-head, -head and I'll pick just one of them to go through to the grand final on Thursday. Competing tonight in my first semi-final are my best local Indian restaurant, La San, Sweet Mandarin, who won the Chinese trophy, and my best local Argentine restaurant, Santa Maria del Sur. Three restaurants, and I've got three extreme challenges to test them to the absolute limit. We haven't slept for the last few days. Getting uh, very, very, very nervous now. How are you? Oh, very nervous, man, very nervous. We're waiting for you for the answer. All worthy opponents, but only one can stay in the competition. <laughs> to see who deserves to go through to the final, I've devised three daunting tests. I've only got an hour to eat. Is that going to be OK? First up, my team of secret diners film undercover for me, after which I eliminate one of the restaurants. The F-word secret diners uh, were somewhat let down. Then the competition heats up in the second test as I hit the restaurants with 30 demanding F-word diners. Two-thirds of the dish hasn't been eaten. Christ almighty, come on. And the third and final challenge, to cook at my flagship three-star restaurant in London. 
Who goes home and who makes it through to the final? Tonight, I decide. They're cooking one dish, the most important dish of their entire lives. Tonight, I'm taking the F-word on the road because it's the last week of my competition to find the F-word's best local restaurant. On tonight's first semi-final, Santa Maria del Sur, La San and Sweet Mandarin, all extraordinary contenders. At La San in Birmingham, I sample some of the most sublime curry I've had outside India. That's exquisitely presented. Finesse. But Akhtar Islam was cocky and argumentative. So nothing to do with flavour? Well, I mean, ultimately, it's edible and it will add to it, but it's not the core of it. If you move it away, you're not going to lose anything. The only thing to match his immense ego was his talent. I'm looking forward to lifting that trophy. In contrast, at Santa Maria del Sur, I was bowled over by the warmth and charm of manager Jose. Jose. Jose, good to Jose see you. Jose from Argentina. And the passion of head chef Ernesto. And I've tasted some of the best steak I've ever eaten. They're amazing. I mean, really good. And Sweet Mandarin in Manchester served up some stunning, authentic Chinese cuisine. It's a fabulous family business run by twin sisters. <laughs> look at this, look at this. Fresh love now. <laughs> I've got to pick the very best restaurant. How? By setting them all three very tough challenges. For the first test, I've hired a team of food experts to work undercover for me as secret diners. Good evening. Have a reservation under the name of Duncan? It's a trick of the restaurant trade I use all the time. I spend a fortune on secret diners coming to all my restaurants. It's a really good way to see how consistent a restaurant is on a daily basis. Can I have the slow-cooked lamb? I'm sending my secret diners to all three restaurants who have no idea they're being filmed. I have to find out how the restaurants perform when they're not in the spotlight and their guard is down. Whichever restaurant fails to impress me on this test will be eliminated. First up, La San. This stylish urban restaurant prides itself on cutting edge and contemporary cuisine. For Birmingham, we were the first restaurant to break away from the mainstream. When I visited La San, I thought the food was fantastic, but the service was slow. I hope my secret diner is taken care of today by the staff. Oh, thank you. I've asked Kate Blinman to go undercover today because she's an experienced food editor. So he sits down, the gentleman, and lets the lady sit down on her own. There's not, many, there's not many waiters around, so it's quite hard to grab somebody. Or if they are, they're, they're collecting plates. I've told Kate to act like a very fussy diner with delicate taste buds. Is it possible to change it? Because it's a bit too hot for me. Sorry. You could do with a little bit more of a smile on there, not look so miserable. Oh, thank you. I made it less spicy. Try that. You don't like the Oh, thank you. Not finally. The smell should be at the beginning, not at the end. It's very sweet of him, actually. He said, if I don't like this one, here, will replace it again. So that's really good. The only thing I could be worried about with Lassan's service, that was attentive halfway through, not at the very beginning. It's a little bit fragmented, and service needs to gel. Next up, Sweet Mandarin in Manchester's Northern Quarter. The Express Lunch looks like it's really good value. It's run by twins who are the third generation of women in a Chinese cooking dynasty established by their grandmother. The sisters don't have a clue that they're going to be assessed by my undercover observer. I've hired Cheryl Farmer because she's got nearly 20 years' experience in the food industry and I've instructed her to order off the menu to see if the chef is willing to be flexible. Do you do a squid that hasn't got a batter? Without the batter. Without the batter. Uh-huh. Is that possible? Yeah, okay, lovely. Thank you. I think that lady is definitely one of the owners, isn't she? Because she needed to please and uh, anything's possible. Oh, this place, thank you. Yeah, food sort of heaped and dumped on a plate. No finesse. It's nice, but it's just not hot enough. I like, it. I like my food really piping hot. I'm trying to get retention, but the waitress has wandered up to her and to buy shots. In fact, the restaurant's been abandoned by our staff, I think. The one positive part is that 
It's run by two sisters, and they're great girls. They're warm, they're funny, and they're charismatic, but there was, must have been an off day. When a restaurant's family-run, then it needs to feel family-run. They need to be a lot more friendlier. So, will Santa Maria del Sur do any better? Opened five years ago, Santa Maria is vibrant and lively. The restaurant radiates warmth and friendliness. My secret diner is on the way, and the fun-loving brigade from Battersea... Buenas noches. ..have no idea. I've only got an hour to eat. Is that OK? Is that going to be OK? Rob Allison regularly works on best-selling recipe books. It's a bit lighter here, really. Yeah. A bit lighter than I actually um, prefer. Oh, yeah. mm. I'd say that the filling could do with a bit of seasoning, but... Um, Pastry is spot on, though. Absolutely spot on. Literally, uh, we're just halfway through our starters, and they've just started lighting the candles. And I think the light, yeah. Is that the lights going down? Yeah, the lights going down a little bit. If you're open at 6 30, then you have to be ready at 6 15. So the minute that first customer walks through, everything's there. Candles are there, music's there, atmosphere, smell of the grill's there. I think for my main course, I'll have, I'm going to go vegetarian, I'm afraid. I'm going to go with the mushrooms. I've asked Rob to be deliberately indecisive to see how the team cope. You know what? I'm going to be really annoying. I've just seen my friend's steak. I really want a steak. Is that OK? You're an absolute dog. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. They have dealt with that impeccably. I would have actually probably kicked my own head in had I done that. Slightly slow start. Picked up in the middle, and then when he changed his mind about the dish, they really warmed to him in a big way. So, uh, yeah, great comeback. So, it's time to eliminate one of the restaurants. My decision is based on everything I've seen and learned so far, including hours of invaluable undercover evidence. No one has any idea I've been spying on them, but I have told them that one restaurant is about to be knocked out of the competition. You know when you're on a roller coaster, just it's just reach the top and it's just stopped for a second, doesn't it? And it's that feeling and it's been going on for about a week now, so <laughs> I, I, I do want the ride to carry on. We haven't slept for the last few days, just being very nervous, waiting for today. It's important result for my life, for my, for my restaurant, and for Cynthia as well, for everyone, you know. Santa Maria Sur, buenas tardes. Hi, Jose, it's Gordon. How are you? Oh, very nervous, man, very nervous. We're waiting for you for the answer. Now, the secret of any good local restaurant is... Attentive service, good food. Recently, OK, we've had the F-word secret... Diners in the Santa Maria restaurant. On the feedback and the insight to what the F-word secret diners... ..gave me, in terms of their experience... Yes? Santa Maria... Oh, my God. <laughs> Congratulations. Really well done. <laughs> Great, something amazing for me. My boss, Cynthia, my little one. Every, every, everyone is happy today. I think it's one of, one of the most important moments for my life. Santa Maria have done amazingly well, and now they have a chance to win a place in the final. Oh my God! Gracias. Who will also be joining Santa Maria in the final stage of the competition? Lasan from Birmingham. Good afternoon, Lasan. Java speaking. I'm gonna help you. Hello, Mandarin. Or sweet mandarin from Manchester. Congratulations. Well done. Welcome back. It's the semi-final of my best local restaurant competition, and three teams are fighting for a place in the final. Only one will go through. So far in tonight's first semi-final, my best local Indian, Chinese, and Argentinian restaurants have been put to the test. Reservation. I sent in a team of secret diners to investigate the contenders. There's not many waiters around, so it's quite hard to grab somebody. And Santa Maria passed with flying colours. They're still in the running. Congratulations. Really well done. <laughs> but now I have to eliminate one of the remaining two restaurants. Who will be going out of the competition? La San or Sweet Mandarin? Every call, I think everyone's just going to be looking at the phone. Today is very important for us. It really is the make or break. 
Good afternoon, Lasan Java speaking. How may I help you? Hello, Spandarin. We've had secret diners in the dining room at Lasan. I've had the F word, secret diners, um, eating a sweet mandarin uh, recently. I've learned a hell of a lot, and I've seen some fascinating things. The feedback's been um, extraordinary. Um, the value of the uh, set lunch menu um, is amazing. Whilst I like your confidence, there's a cockiness that has, has to be contained. So, the name of the game is consistency, and that has to be so apparent across the board. Sweet Mandarin. I'm really sorry. The F word secret diners uh, were somewhat let down. The uh, food uh, wasn't up to scratch. There was also complaints in terms of um, service being uninterested. So um, I'm really sorry. Thank you, ladies. Of course we're disappointed because we've gone so far into the competition. You win or lose in life, don't you? That's... We are a winner because yeah. we have won the best Chinese yeah, restaurant. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? The Sun. Really good. Fantastic work, great feedback from the secret diners. Incredibly happy, very consistent. Congratulations. Well done. Thank you, sir. Well done. Well, I have some lost words because I've never experienced anything like this. It's, it's just absolutely amazing. I mean, the, the feeling is, is, is definitely there. And I mean, obviously, with reference to my cocky uh, nachos, you know, it's just the way it is. <laughs> So I've chosen Santa Maria from South London to fight it out with Lasanne from Birmingham. To be worthy of a place in the final, they have to survive two more challenges. First, I've asked 30 F-word diners to test Lasanne and Santa Maria to breaking point. And I'm going to judge both restaurants' performance more critically than ever before. We're going to have lunch at Lasanne and then dinner at Santa Maria. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Really good to see you. You're going to be my eyes and ears across the whole dining room. Your experience is going to help me judge which restaurants go through to the final of the F-Word's best local restaurant. With Lasanne under intense pressure, I'm going to watch like a hawk. Front of house and behind the scenes in the kitchen. I'm expecting to uh, wow everyone, you know, dazzle and delight. And I'm, you know, confident we'll uh, do well because it's our own kitchen and something that we, you know, we're working every day and it's food that we do all the time, so you know, nothing's alien to us, so I think it'll, it'll be good. Hi, guys. Hi. Ladies, how are you all? I'm very well, Chef. How are you? Yeah, very well indeed, thank you. Good to see you. Right, see you too. this is it. Real pressure. You performed brilliantly in the F-Word restaurant. Thank now you. I want to see what you like in your own restaurant under immense pressure. Two hours, two courses, 30 diners. Yes? It's not just the food, the service. Have you got what it takes to get into the final? Yeah, this today, OK, will help me judge you guys under pressure. I'll be upstairs, downstairs, in and out, in and out. Good luck. Thank you. Two hours, starting from now. Off you go, guys, yes? I know this is every restaurant's worst nightmare, 30 diners arriving all at once. But I need to test the team to the limit. If Act Harney staff support each other today, it should run like clockwork. But I can tell straight away that the ordering system is far too complicated. So each waiter takes an order, then puts it in the computer. And just forwards it back to Taj, who will enter the order. And, and so that's very difficult, that, isn't it? Because if he's entering the computer and they're taking the order, if he makes a mistake, then it's already going to two different people before he gets to the kitchen. The orders taken by the waiters are given to the maitre d', who puts them into the computer in the dining room upstairs. Then they're supposed to be printed out in the kitchen, which is downstairs. OK, gentlemen, here it goes. You've got one lemon sole, one Afghani lamb. Get the lamb in straight away, please. Lemon sole, hold that back for a second. We've got two. Course is missing on table 11's order. Complicated ordering system. They take the order, yep. then it goes into uh, another waiter's hand, yep. and then it goes to the computer. You just said there's two courses missing. Why doesn't one waiter take an order, come to the computer, complete it without passing it on to somebody else? The reason why, I mean, uh, I mean the ordering system, the, we've got quite an old system. Just trying to make your life easier, that's what I'm just asking, no, 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 no. from a chef's point of view. If I don't feel comfortable, I come down and ask you, and I want to know your reason, that's all. Of course, no, no, cool. With 30 customers to look after at the same time, Actar's ordering system can't cope. 
and my diners are now eating different courses. It looks bad for customers eating their main course when other customers haven't had their starter. For me, it's like a regular a la carte operation. So it's not all a la carte, so don't bullshit me that way. What I'm trying to say is that if I'm sat here and I'm waiting for my starter, and I'm still waiting for my starter, and then the next table's main course has come, I'm going to feel a little bit pissed off. That's what I'm trying to tell you. you are OK, okay. don't waffle me. Yes. Thank you. And the waiting times are just far too long. How long have you been waiting for your main courses? You only shared a starter. Yeah. How long have you been waiting for the main courses? Um, roughly. Five or what? 30 minutes or so. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've got it down as 35 minutes. Oh, wow. 35 minutes is far too long. OK, thank you. Uh, how long for their main course, please? I think the customer needs to know. After 60 yeah. main course, how much longer? Can you give me a time? 60? Yeah. That's towards the end. Do you want that first? Give me a time first. Man. That could be 8 to 10 minutes at least. Uh, 10 minutes. At least. Actor, he's got to get a grip, get hold of the reins, and really sort of start pushing this food out. But, you know, kitchens just don't run normally. They need generating. You've got to push them all the time. So there's a customer sat upstairs, minus the main course, which is not good enough. When Akhtar's food does make it to my diners, they think it's absolutely delicious. So I had the uh, sea bass. Really, really, really good. No complaints. Fantastic. A lot of really powerful flavours going on, so it's good. But the curry isn't to everyone's taste. Did the customers say anything when we clear this away? Customers are finding the sauce a bit too much sometimes. Okay. Is anyone telling the chef? I think the chef says that as a signature dish, so he feels uh, he needs to have quite a lot of sauce. Oh, I know it's a signature dish, but it doesn't stop him from making it less spicy, does it? It doesn't, know. It's like everyone's scared to tell the chef what's happening. Does anyone give constructive feedback to the uh, chef downstairs or not? No? If this was my restaurant, chef. OK, chef. I'd be deeply concerned chef. that food like that is coming back. Why is that not eaten? And why is all the sauce still there? Is there an issue? Customer not happy? Surely you'd want to know. Yes, sir. That's all, and this is a signature dish. Sure. This is something that means a lot to the restaurant, yet no one's saying anything. Sure. If the waiters can't give Akhtar honest feedback on his dishes, that's a serious problem. Akhtar, it's Gordon. So, Chef? Have a quick taste of the uh, Mugmani sauce. They're saying, it, they're saying it's a little bit too spicy. OK, Chef, I mean, with the reference to the Mugmani, you've got to find out why it's coming, because if you leave it... It's a nightmare, this. Um, then once again, I mean, it, it's not what it is. I mean, it's, with, we serve it a lot yeah. milder than... Appreci <sighs> fucking hell. I appreciate that. There's only two tables. That's all just a touch of yoghurt, but there's another table that have been cleared and two-thirds of the dish hasn't been eaten, so... Two plus two is four. There's only 30 of my diners here. It's not as if there's 120 people sat up here. The food in the restaurant was excellent, so on that basis, I think I'd you know, definitely come back and, and give it another try. So, my 30 diners definitely enjoyed their lunch, but there is room for improvement. Right. Uh, well done. I tasted every dish. I thought the food was outstanding. I just uh, found the mutton, chef. I thought the food was outstanding. Absolutely delicious. You're gonna forget Doesn't that need... masala? Can I finish? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. However, when customers don't finish two thirds of their plate, I think you should see what's going on. I don't think food should just be washed down to the bin and plates stuck in the dishwasher. I think that should come back down to the kitchen because that gives you feedback. We started off good in the kitchen, but upstairs was somewhat at many stages, embarrassing. The service was erratic, orders been taken, main calls had been missed off. I'm looking for a restaurant to win the F Word's best local restaurant on an overall experience. I thought the food was delicious. I thought the service was mediocre. Um, right now, you know, um, I was a bit, bit disappointed that, you know, we didn't, uh, you know, Delight Chef Ramsay on all all points of the dining experience. Could have been better, but you know the fact is, you know we've made it so far, and he did say he's got something up his sleeve for the next challenge. So I'm looking forward to that now. Next stop, dinner at the Argentine Grill House in South London. When I first visited Santa Maria, they served me some of the best steak I've ever had. 
so I hope, even under pressure from my 30 F word diners. Round two, here we go. They're going to maintain their excellent standards. And, and yes, Randy Davis and I, diners are coming really soon. I'm always trying to relax him because he's nervous. Hola. Hi. How are you? You're all right? Hi. Fine, thank you. This is going to be a big test on tonight. 30 diners arriving all at the same time. Will they manage on the grill? Will they manage on the service? Will it be fast, slow? I want to see what they're like with me watching them in their own environment. Good to see you guys. Yeah. And first of all, congratulations. Uh, really well done. Now is where it really is going to be immense pressure. Now, real diners in your restaurants, yeah, that really know their food. So I want to see it running under immense pressure like a normal, fully booked restaurant, yeah? Make sure that everything you send out of the kitchen, you're 100% happy with, because they are critical, OK? Two hours, start from now. Good luck, off you go. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And remember, it's not a racer. Not a racer, okay. quality is a bit. Who's cooking in the kitchen now? Just two of you? Just two of you, yes. Wow. Yeah. Oh my god. OK, we have got the first table, table number three. One more wrong asado. One filet medium rare, one ribeye medium rare, and two tuna steaks. Santa Maria are quick off the mark, but their starters are all going out at once. One and five. They need to stagger the orders and pace themselves. You normally send the starters that quickly? Okay. You don't wait till your steaks are on first before you send the starter, or you just send the starters straight away? Just the starters. OK. Because they're quite thick, those filet. Yes. Huh? yes. Are they? Quite thick. Yes. They've only been here literally 50 minutes. First order taken within five minutes, already the food's coming out. Good start, very good start. My big worry, if Ernesto gets 30 different steaks on that grill, going away at all at the same time, different temperatures, rare, medium, medium well, that's going to be a big test for him in about 45 minutes' time. I hope he doesn't crack. So far, my diners are having a lovely time. Just from sort of the first moment we've walked in, really, really friendly staff. The waiters came over and introduced themselves, they've chatted to us, they've, you know, had a bit of a laugh with us. But having served the starters simultaneously, Ernesto's now under pressure to have 30 main courses ready at exactly the same time as well. How's table number one, Ernesto? Table number one, after table number five, please. Tuna's ready on that table there. Yes. Surely the main courses you serve at the same time. They're not eating, that's all. They're, they're leaving it to go cold. Sorry for the slightly delay, guys. It's coming the steak right now. No problem. Hopefully we will make it up with the steak. OK, no problem. <laughs> So there's no... Oh, here they come now. Come in okay. there. Yeah, okay, fine. OK, good. The only, the only thing is, when you have all the people asking at the same time... Oh, I know. Mm. No, no, no. That's what I said. You, don't, you must be... You well, must don't send the starters so quickly. So exactly. There's not it's such true. a long gap between the main course and the starters. Yeah, that's a... Thank you, thank you. That's a good point to speak afterwards. Let me speak with you guys. There's an atmosphere that's high and it's electric, which is great. Sounds brilliant. But they just shouldn't rush food out there. Take their time. Pace yourself a little bit more. The starter came very quickly, within a few moments. Um, following that, after five, ten minutes, the main course. It's all very, very fast. It's as if they want to turn the tables for another person or people. That's really good. That's because it melts, doesn't it? Yeah, that is awesome. We've all been here just over an hour, and already the last orders have been cooked. It's the last one. Yes, it's the last one. Medium rare, medium rare. Dun, ta -dun, ta -dun, ta -dun, ta -dun. Super Cubano. The team have worked so well together that they've finished with 40 minutes left on the clock. <laughs> it, was, it was really, really good. Very enjoyable. Good taste. It was uh, perfect and uh, absolutely melted in your mouth. It's probably the best steak I've ever tasted, actually. I had fillet steak as my main course, which was absolutely superb. I can't fault it at all. OK. Right. First of all, well done. I thought you handled it very well. I thought the food, you know, looked and tasted immaculate. I thought the service was very friendly and very charming, yeah? If there's one criticism tonight, it's not a race. You finish with just over 40 minutes left. There's only 30 customers in there, not 130 customers, and every table, yeah? It's a value table. They're here for an experience, the overall package. Don't rush. Well done. Thank you very much. Job well done. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. We tried to make a great job tonight with, a, with love, the passion. Tried to make wonderful food tonight. Santa Maria Grill is going to be a tough one to beat because there's a whole package there and it's, it's done to perfection. Watching Ernesto work on that grill, I mean, it's amazing. I mean, talk about multitask. It's like an octopus with like 10 arms. 
And more importantly, above everything, everything they touch is about passion. We've had a day of extraordinary dining at two incredible restaurants, but one of them will be eliminated. The biggest test is still in front of them. Who's going through the final right now? I haven't got a clue. Welcome back to the F Word. Lasanne and Santa Maria are fighting out for a place in the final. Tonight, two semi-finalists have already faced two daunting tests. Under pressure in their own restaurants, I'm seeing their true colours. No, no fuck-ups today. Go, go, go. Go. At Lasanne, 29-year-old Akhtar has proved fearless in the kitchen. One lemon sole, one Afghani lamb. Get the lamb in straight away, please. Lemon sole, hold that back for a second. He pushes culinary boundaries, and Lasanne's original distinctive menu reflects his passion for innovation. I thought the food was outstanding. But he risks overcomplicating the food. You're trying too hard. He has an extraordinary potential, but he won't listen to advice, even from me. If I don't feel comfortable, I come down and ask you, and I want to know your reason, that's all. So he misses out on vital feedback. At Santa Maria, Ernesto La Brava is a master of his charcoal grill. OK, we have got the first table, table number three. He times each state to perfection, and that takes talent. Above everything, everything they touch is about passion. But I'm worried that the menu and Ernesto's repertoire is a bit limited. He cooks sublimely within his comfort zone, and I'm already impressed, but to earn a place in the final, he has to dazzle me. Now, both restaurants face the ultimate challenge. Here, at my own flagship restaurant, Royal Hospital Road in London. Actar and Ernesto must create and serve exquisite cuisine worthy of a place on the menu at my three Michelin star restaurant. They're cooking one dish, the most important dish of their entire lives. And with that one dish, they've got one final chance to prove themselves. I am very, very nervous to cook in this restaurant because it's the restaurant of one of the best chef in, in the world. Cooking at Chef Ramsay's restaurant, three Michelin star, is something that I've always aspired to, you know, never mind three, one would do for me, and I'm cooking the three Michelin star kitchen today. I've worked for over 10 years to build Royal Hospital Road's reputation, and tonight, I'm putting it on the line. I've invited some highly distinguished guests, including Angela Hartnett, one of the only female chefs in Britain ever to be awarded a Michelin star. It's a huge challenge for these guys to be cooking in this three-star restaurant. And then they've got Gordon bearing down on them, so they're probably having a nervous breakdown as we speak. But, you know, hey-ho, we're looking forward to some food, hopefully. Let's see if we get some. But, yeah, I wouldn't wish it on anyone. Welcome to Royal Hostel Road. Good to see you guys. Um, this is it. On the back of today's performance, one of you will be going through to the final. First time in ten years I've ever handed my restaurant over to any chef. This is my baby. Three Michelin stars. Everything I've ever worked for in 25 years is inside this restaurant. It's got to be absolutely perfect. This is the climax. One of you is going through to the final. Good luck. Off you go. Thank you, sir. The teams are working in one of the most well-equipped kitchens in Britain, with the finest ingredients money can buy. I've challenged both chefs to create one dish using the best quality English lamb which I provided. It's incredibly flavoursome, but a challenging meat to cook perfectly. I'll order two covers away, table six. Ernesto? Yeah, chef. Yeah, two lamb kebabs. Yeah, chef. Thank you. Cynthia, you can respond as well, please. Yes, chef. Four covers away, table one. Four loin of lamb. Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, Thank you. Oh, my God. Come on, guys. For his dish tonight, Akhtar has raised the bar yet again. He's serving a roast smoked loin of lamb on cauliflower and potato with a caramelised onion and saffron gravy. It's incredibly ambitious, with 44 ingredients. The most complicated dish currently on my menu here has only 19. Akhtar has marinated the loin of lamb overnight in traditional Indian spices. He smokes the meat with charcoal before searing it, then bakes it for six to eight minutes. Akhtar blanches the cauliflower and potato base and fries it with herbs and spices. 
and then serves his dish with an onion and saffron gravy. If Akhtar doesn't blend the spices with perfect precision, he'll ruin the entire dish. To pull this off requires a level of skill near genius. Ultimately, every uh, competition has winners and losers. It's just that up till now, I've never tasted what it feels like to be the loser. Done. Done. Come on. We've always said, you know, there's only one place for us, and that is winning it. Uh, we, we didn't say, you know, we'll, you know, we're happy. Can you hold, hold, hold this get. for me, please? Um, be careful. Use a ladle because you're going to burn my hands. So the idea behind the dish was what? We've got Rajasthani-style marinades, um, which is um, smoked with then cloves, and then we've got a uh, Mughal-style gravy. That's they introduced the use of cashew nuts mm -hmm. and caramelised onion, and that's served with a uh, potatoes and cauliflower, which is cooked in a North Indian Punjabi style with the fresh fenugreek. Fenugreek and saffron for the potatoes and cauliflower? No, the saffron's actually in the, uh, the, the gravy. In the well. gravy? Yeah, that's right. The dish is a little bit too complicated. It's adventurous, again. I just hope this time it doesn't come back to bite them on the arse. Very nice. That looks lovely. Go, please. Let's go. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. It's very spicy. It's spicy. Thank you. This is nice, it's tasty. Yeah, I mean, actors cooking is three Michelin star, uh, star standard anyway, so it's, it's only fitting that they're in this kitchen to cook this wonderful meal. In stark contrast to Akhtar's dish, Ernesto has chosen to work with just a handful of flavours. I am living the dream. I'm so, so happy today. If we win, that should be something incredible for my life. It's a simple dish, lamb kebab, with a potato salad and mint chutney. Ernesto marinades his cube loin of lamb in smoked paprika, cumin, coriander and garlic. And then he threads it onto fresh sticks of rosemary with red pepper and onion. He mixes purple and baby new potatoes with a dressing of olive oil, lemon juice and creme fraiche and add sliced radishes and herbs. The chutney is a simple mix of ginger, chili, and mint. Ernesto griddles his kebab until it's charred on the outside. This is definitely the first time a kebab has been served at Royal Hospital Road. It's something I'd expect to see on the menu at Santa Maria, but today, I'm looking for a dish worthy of a three Michelin star restaurant. Okay, uh, talk me through the dish, because it sounds a bit plain Jane, doesn't it, in terms of boring? Yes. Kebab, but it's not just an average kebab, it's a yes. special kebab. A special kebab with the rosemary stick, something natural. What does the rosemary do inside that lamb? Rosemary is amazing. I think rosemary lamb yeah. is the best combination of flavors. So you've got mint in the marinade and rosemary running through the lamb. Yes. So you you think the simplicity... The simplicity is the best point. Yeah, and the grill will be the overcomplicated... Yes, overcomplicated. We need to find things easy to make. Right. Yes, put, boom, plate ready, out, next table. And I think that is... Keep dancing, you know. Today's about raising the bar and taking a dish to a different level to make it absolutely exceptional. Has he got the aspirations to go higher or is he going to just stay in that mainstream grill? Good. That looks very simple, yes, but it looks simple. incredibly delicious. Simple, yeah. Go, please. Yeah. Table five. Let's go. Thank you. Well done. Simple. Now four more away. Gracias, thank you. Quite, quite strong on the uh, garlic side, you know? That's lovely, yeah. The sauce is delicious. If you ask a football player where he would like to play, they would say Wembley. If you are someone to cook, they would say Gordon Ramsay Kitchen. Man. This is the cathedral of cooking, so... I think they are very nervous, but I think they will do it okay. What you get from Santa Maria is passion through and through. There's no, there's no egos. Do you know, it's about them as a team, not about one individual. And I think more than anything, this guy cooks from the heart. Santa Maria has all connected, bonded, and it shows. And yet these two here, there's no teamwork. There's no, no support there. You donkey! I told you to put a fresh two on that was overcooked. No, no, no. Are you two okay? We're, we're fine, yeah. Jeff. We're fine. Because we're, we're... it's not looking like the most dynamic team together. Well, we're yeah. singing off the uh, same hymn sheet. Generally, it's like they couldn't be any further apart. That's how mistakes come in. 
Is that a bit hot for you, Chef? What do you mean, is that a bit hot for me? Yeah. I just tasted I just it. Thought, I thought I it was thought, thought, no, delicious. Thought, but you've got this fucking thing that I've... You know, no, I, just... I, I, I think you're quite a talented guy. Unfortunately, your cockiness rides over your talent. You just turned you. around and looked at me and said, is that a bit too hot for not, you? Not in that way, no, Ras. Oh, OK, well, why am I supposed to I take just, it? Just... You're not here to blow smoke up my ass. And secondly, more importantly, I thought the dish was delicious. Thank you. But before you ram it down my throat, it's just nice to back off a little bit and show a little bit of humility. I just thought... No, I'm, you know, fine. I'm allowed to have... Been, I'm, I'm not you stopping know. you from allowing your thoughts, but there's, yeah. a, there's a difference just, between thinking and I ramming know. down someone's I just, throat. I just, I just thought, Chef, that you found it quite uncomfortable. What I was trying to say at that no. point was not, was it too hot? Absolutely fine. It will, it will cut once the cream goes into that it. That I get. That I get. I want to taste the base before you finished it, so I can see it through different stages, seeing how clever it is to get from that to the final dish. Yes, chef. That's all. Let the food do the talking. Pipe down a little bit and put that big mouth, big boy attitude into your food. That will get you through to the final. How long for the last two, please? We're placing up now, Chef. OK, great. Well done. Good. So service is over and it's time to discover the truth of my distinguished guests. In terms of the curry dish today, cooked by Lasanne, how was that for you? I find extraordinary dish, which is produced and the taste and texture, saffron sauce, beautifully bland, superb dish, well presented, well garnished, and I loved it. With this dish, I think actors done it. It is in the final for definitely, in my view, at least. Talk to me about the lamb kebab. How was that? It's perfect. Particularly the sauce. Yes, you know, in terms of the lamb kebab uh, and the uh, lamb curry, which one do you prefer? The lamb kebab. The lamb kebab. Yeah. Fascinating, sir. Yeah, lamb kebab or lamb curry? Lamb kebab. Lamb kebab. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think they really done it. I think this plate is the winning plate. Were you happy with that? Very happy, Chef. Yeah? yeah? Good. Time was great. Food tasted great. What was more impressive than anything is how the team worked. Sean, well done. Thank you, Chef. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I am 100% happy in this great place, this amazing restaurant. It's, it's, it's a dream. I am very, very happy. Everything was amazing. Very, very good. Mm. How was that for you? Um, it wasn't... Um, I wouldn't say it was the best service of my life. Um, Were you happy with the dish? Um, yes, I was totally happy. What's happy. going on with the teamwork? What happened there? The teamwork, I mean, the way we communicate, because obviously they, they, there is the issue with the language barrier, so on and so forth, so it's, it's quite simply just blunt instructions, can you follow this, follow that? I want you to do so well. I yeah. know that, Chef. I know you've put so much into this, and, you know, throughout the whole process, you've been so supportive, and, you know, everything you've said, I have taken on board. Right. Well done. Some people may look at me and think, I'm cocky, I'm arrogant, I'm unapproachable. I mean, Chef's obviously got that impression of me. But I'm not like that at all. It's just, throughout the years, We've always... We've always been knocked for our approach by people within our industry for, you know, pushing the barrier, not being... Just, you know, go with the flow of what's available, what's out there, and taking the easier approach. And I guess it's a... a defence mechanism that we've built up. I'm not here to offend anyone. I didn't want to offend Chef, but this does mean a lot to me. The fact that I was able to cook in the kitchen today, have my my rest, my menu item on, on Chef's menu card, you know, that's that has overwhelmed me. And you know, I'm not a man, I'm not a very emotional person, but as you can see, you know, it's, it's, it's been very tough for me today and I, I didn't didn't want it to end up this way. Only one restaurant can go through to my grand final, and tonight, who stays and who goes, is my decision. Right now, uh, I'm facing an impossible task. Honestly, who's got the edge? I don't know right now. Welcome back to Royal Hospital Road. 
I'm about to choose one restaurant to go through to the grand final of my competition. Will it be Santa Maria del Sur or La San? In very different ways, they are both exceptional restaurants. Before I make my choice, I'm going to taste the dishes cooked here tonight by Ernesto and Akhtar. Right, Santa Maria, lamb kebab. Doesn't sound the most glamorous, but it looks fantastic. A nice potato salad, purple potatoes, and waxy new potatoes, so with a mint chutney. Mm. Wow. The mint chutney is made with rice wine vinegar, jalapeno pepper. Really nice and vibrant, and sort of wakes up that lamb. I was a little bit worried when I first saw the dish in terms of the simplicity factor, but... Mm. Delicious. In terms of taste, lovely warm potato salad, stunning kebab, and the most amazing mint chutney. Yeah, brilliant. That was it. Close your eyes and wow, this is heaven. Absolutely delicious. Lesan, presentation, quite fiddly, yet you'd expect that from Akhtar. Mmm. Wow. Absolutely phenomenal. Anyone can cook lamb like that, but not anyone can make a gravy as delicious as that. You taste it and it, it blows your mind away. I mean, it's just phenomenal. I mean, absolutely delicious. Talented, talented cook, without a shadow of doubt. Unfortunately, the biggest problem is himself. And I'm faced with a tough, tough choice. Lasan, they, they, they hit the heights, but boy, do they come down, crashing big time. But the food up there is extraordinary when it gets there. Santa Maria, consistently good every day. Haven't put a foot out of place yet. This is a very tough call. So, it's the moment of truth. Two outstanding restaurants, but only one can win a place in the grand final. OK. First of all, to all of you, yeah, seriously well done. I really mean that. Really well done. Absolutely phenomenal, OK? Santa Maria. I love the passion, absolutely love it. And it's a breath of fresh air to see not just the chefs, but the service at such an exciting level. Everything you touch is about passion and it shows across the board. Those 20 main courses were phenomenal. The mint sauce was exceptional. The texture of the lamb, yeah, absolutely delicious. You weren't even working on charcoal and you still managed to put that flavour in it. Really well done. Weaknesses? Got slightly nervous when I saw just three things on the plate. Could you put something else on there in terms of a grilled vegetable or a, a, a salad? Could you push the boundary out even further? I gave you the perfect opportunity today to really show off. I thought the dish was outstanding. Thank you, Chef. You delivered. Could you have done any more? Who knows? Lasan, the first minute I walked into that restaurant, I was excited and blown away by the level of ambition. You're pushing the boundaries out like no other restaurants within your category. Unique flavour. I mean, very unique flavour. And you don't really expect to find that little bit of magic there. It's like, wow, give me more of that. Lowe's, when you get excited, about reaching the top, it can't be done individually. It has to be done with a team. That's not one in the kitchen, one in the dining room. That is everybody. You have to take everybody to where you want to go. Now, there's only one restaurant that's going through to the final. This has been the toughest decision so far, let me tell you that. And I really mean that. The restaurant that's going through to the final... ..is La San. <laughs> Now, 
Let the food do the talking, OK? And this was unique. Really well done. Thank you. OK? And I can't wait to see how you perform in the final. I won't disappoint, yeah. Chef. You and your team, yeah? Yes, yeah, Chef. Well done. Thank really you. well done. Thank Congratulations. You. And you, come here, you. Uh, <laughs> well done. Absolutely brilliant. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. That was a difficult decision for me, and you are one talented chef. Never forget that. It, it is a bit of a shock. Still is a bit of a shock, and I'm, you know, I'm still, still sinking in. So, on to the final, and, <laughs> and, and beyond, yeah? Just looking forward to getting back and uh, celebrating with the team. And now we see him this emotion. <laughs> Both restaurants produce food worthy of Royal Hossel Row tonight. I'm very proud of them, but ultimately, I saw real flashes of genius in the dishes Actar created. Lassen has the potential to be one of the great Indian restaurants, and Actar thoroughly deserves his place in the final. I think everyone will tell you I've been. Uh... I've been quite horrible to be around. Because <laughs> <laughs> this means a hell of a lot. And. A dream come true doesn't sum up what this means to me. In my second semi-final, three more restaurants, three more challenges. Where is the front? Where? Who will compete against Lasan in the grand final? It's got to be absolutely perfect. One of you is going through to the final.